Spirit in the now. The end time outpouring of the Spirit. And this morning, I'm going to speak to you about the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want you to give you a quick review of what I've been teaching. And then I will minister to the people that have need if you're sick in your body, if you need deliverance in your body, in your mind. So be ready. And remember, at the end, we're going to give, the, give away all the people that we've been announcing. I, watch us, I don't want you to go because we're going to have something special for you. So I want you to go to the scripture, please. Uh, go to the scriptures in Acts. Actually, went to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And let me mention something to you and the baptism of the Spirit. This is a series I've been teaching. And I talked about that there's a difference between uh, being born of the Spirit and being baptized in the Spirit. There's a big, big difference between born of the Spirit. Lift your hands and say, born of the Spirit. You need to say it louder. Born of the Spirit and being baptized in the Spirit. So I announced last time that when you're born of the Spirit, that is the, be- the, the first birth of the, the, the first breath of the Spirit in us. So that's the Spirit within us. And when I talk to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's the second breath. That is the, when the Holy Spirit empowers you to do what God calls you to be. Can I hear an amen, people? So I, I mentioned some words, and I don't have the time. I mentioned the word endued. So you shall receive power. I mentioned the word endued, which means to cloth oneself with. I mentioned the word power, and the word power in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible talks about if you put Acts one twenty eight, you shall receive power. The word power is the miracle working power of God. The word dunamis, which means the The miracle working power of God. And I mentioned also what baptism means. Baptism is to be submerged, to be immersed in power, in dynamite. Can I hear an amen, people? So I, I, I told you what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The definition I gave you is a supernatural atmosphere. Pour into a vessel that has found his identity in Christ to manifest supernatural activity. Every time you baptize with the Spirit is to manifest supernatural activity. I also mentioned the fact that many people emphasize tongues. They said, well, you chud, if you speak in tongues, you got power. No, I said to you, Jesus never emphasized tongues. I speak in tongues. I pray in tongues more than you. But like Paul said, I do pray in tongues, but the tongues are only the initial evidence that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I see people that speak in tongues that they don't have power. So the emphasis is not the tongues. The tongues is the initial evidence. But actually what Jesus was emphasizing was power. Lift your hands and say power. power. Come on, say it. So the, 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 what Jesus emphasized was power. So that's what his emphasis. It was not tongues. Tongues was the beginning, was the introduction. So I spoke to you about, you know, the, the definition, and I saw the evidences that you've been filled and been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I say you become saturated in the power of God. Number two, you remain in a place of being supernaturalized, meaning that you act the power of God at will. You can pray for people anytime, everywhere. Number three, I say the main evidence that you receive the baptism of the Spirit is that you can demonstrate power. You got the power. And number four, God becomes a total reality in your life. So that's what I was talking about last week. And I said that the the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not an option. It's a commandment. Jesus said, and he commanded them. Not to go, but to stay in Jerusalem until being baptized with power. Jesus commanded them. It's not an option. Jesus said, (laughs) it's not an option. Because so many people today, they don't think they need the baptism of the Holy Spirit because they see ministry as a career. And a ministry is supernatural. You can't see ministry as a career. Ministry is not a career. Ministry is supernatural. You need the power of God to do it. Now, and now, I know and understanding, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're going to have religion. We're going to have 
just the form of God, but we're not going to have reality of God. So that's why we, every believer needs it. And every believer must have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to understand. Now let's get into the message. What is the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Why? You, so many of you have been baptized in the Spirit and you don't know why. It's like you have an AK-47 and you don't, know, you don't know how to use it. You don't know what it's for. It's like having a tank to do war and you don't know what for. So I want you to understand why you've been clothed with power. I want you to know why you've been baptized and saturated with power. I wish I can hear an amen this morning. So uh, let's, let's give the purpose of the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the now. Number one, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. And, and the moment when you baptize with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, you have the authority to exercise power. Okay, one of the purpose of the Holy Spirit, you being baptized with power, is for you to exercise power. Ex say with me, power. power. So uh, I want you to see two words in Luke chapter 10, verse 18 and 19. You will see two words in the scripture. One, the word authority and the word power. Lift your hands and say it. Power and authority. No, no, but you don't, you don't sound like have a strong coffee today. Come, lift your hands and say, power and authority. Okay, the word power is the word miracle work in power. The word dunamis, which means power, the ability. Authority is the authorization to use the power. So I'm going to say it again. It's the word Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And they have said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. That is a type of demons. Serpents and scorpions. And all over the power of the enemy. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Come on, put your hand together. Okay. So, when does that happen? When is it that Jesus said, I'm giving you authority and I'm giving you power? Authority is the legal right to use ability. So he said, the moment you've been baptized with my Holy Spirit, this is with the initial evidence that you speak in other tongues. In that moment, I am authorizing every believer to use my power and my authority. Many of you know, but you don't never use it. <laughs> Many, oh yeah, I do have a, a power, I have authority. Authority, you take authority. You take authority. In other words, Jesus said, the moment you're being baptized, he said, you mo the moment you baptize with my Holy Spirit, this is you submerge in power, you immerse in power. I'm giving you an authorization. Authorization for what? To exercise power. In other words, from that moment on, you can cast out demons. From that moment on, you authorize to preach my gospel with power. You authorize to cast out demons, to heal the sick. Can I hear an amen? I didn't hear that. So what I'm saying to you is this. So he said, the moment you receive, the moment you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that, that, is, that, that is the moment you authorize. Say with me, authorization. So meaning sickness, diseases, devil circumstances, anything in your life. Now, the moment you're being baptized, that's the reason. That's the purpose. God has given you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because now you're ready. You're authorized. You're, you're now you're, you're a legal witness of Jesus Christ. Okay, can I hear an amen, people? So Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. You authorize as a believer to preach the gospel, to win souls, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, the brokenhearted. So Matthew 10, and, and, uh, 10, 7, this is what Jesus said. As you go, preach saying, as you go, as you go, <laughs> as you go. What does that mean? Don't wait for somebody to come and to help you to evangelize. I'm waiting for somebody God called me to Africa to preach the gospel. I am waiting for God to give me a call for India. As you go in life, 
As you go to your job, you preach the gospel. As you go to your school, you preach the gospel. As you go, no, you didn't hear what I said. As you go, as you go, don't wait for you, for God to say, well, I'm waiting for a call from God. As you go, you preach the gospel. You've been authorized by God to preach the gospel. You've been authorized by God, I said, to preach the gospel. So as you go in life, as you go, as you do in business, you preach in the gospel and you're demonstrating, you're authorized to demonstrate Jesus. As you go in life, you don't have to wait a miracle crusade. You don't need a pulpit. As you go, as you go, I've been in vacation. As I've been in vacation, I got people saved. <laughs> I've been in a parking lot, and as I park in my car, I speak to the people and got saved. Uh, you don't have to wait. As you go, you've been, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has a purpose. Many of you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. You speak another tongue for nothing. God said, as you go, now you've been authorized. You are a legal witness to preach my gospel, to cast out demons, to heal the sick. Now you go. Don't wait for me to say, well, let's wait for a special training in USM. That is a higher training. When you come to USM, it's because you really want to go in the space. I didn't hear what I said. So what I'm saying to you is this. Jesus said, as you go, put the foot the scripture, please. As you go, as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But remember, the kingdom of God without its power is not legal. You can't just say, I can't just tell you Jesus loves you. No, no, wait a minute. You need to bring the kingdom. You have to say, there's a person that is sick in their body. And then you said, I hear, as I am going, as I go, as you go, as you go on vacation, as you go into business, as you go into school, as you go, you say, wait a minute, I am a carrier of the power and I've been authorized by heaven to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to preach the gospel because I've been baptized with miracle working power. So you understand. So he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why? And then verse 8. Say with me. This is what you do. As you are baptized, that moment, lift your hands and say, baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't hear you very well. I think it's 9 a.m., but you need to shout it more. Okay. When you pay baptized to the Holy Spirit, this is what he said. Uh, now you authorize. Pastor, but I need somebody to lay hands on me because I, I don't know what to do. This is what the Bible says. The moment you say, that moment, that moment, that moment, God said, oh, oh, that's the sign that you've been authorized to cast out demons, to preach the gospel as you go. As you go. Touch the neighbor, tell as you go. Oh, I am waiting for... for for Pastor Rodney or Pastor Maldonado, Pastor Benny to come to uh, take me to a crusade. As you go. And this is what you're going to do as you go. Heal the sick. Pastor, but I can't pray for the sick. Heal the sick. As you go, heal the sick. He didn't say he will heal them. He said you will heal them. Pastor, but I know Jesus. You understand what I mean. God is the healer, but he will use you. So heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you receive. Freely give. Come on. That's the gospel of the kingdom. That's the preaching of the gospel. Everywhere you go, the moment you've been baptized, you've been baptized with power for something. You have to understand, you don't speak in tongues just to feel the goosebumps. Oh my God, I feel tongues. No, no, no. You got those tongues to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Is anybody here ready as you go to preach the gospel? Heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the leper. Somebody is ready. Touch the neighbor till I'm, I'm ready. Oh my God, there's so many Christians that bothers me. And they say, no, I'm waiting for a call from God. Well, that's what Jesus said. 
So number one purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that you go and do the work of the ministry. As you go, you preach, you heal, you deliver, you cast out demons. Now you're being authorized. Number two, write it down quickly. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want you to write it down as a note. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is also an endorsement of God to deal with the devil. It's an endorsement of God to say, you authorized to deal with that dirty devil. Number two. What's the second purpose? Why you be speaking in tongues? Pastor, I speak in tongues, I feel good. No, that's not the reason. That's not the purpose. What God gave you, that baptism of the Spirit. First is to, be, to say, you authorize. Is anybody here being baptized through the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? I want to see your hands. What does that, don't, don't put it down, don't put it down. What does that mean? You need to shout, I am authorized. I didn't hear you authorized to what to exercise power and authority lift your hands again say how many of you speak in tongues how many of you been baptized with the holy spirit i want to see your hands so what what does that mean then oh just to feel oh my god i feel the tongues arise no no you've been authorized to exercise power and authority Exercise power and authority over sickness, over disease, over demons, over impossibility. You need to say in the name of Jesus, I am authorized. You don't have to be perfect to be authorized. The only requirement is that you've been submerged in power. Put your hands together. Give them a big praise. My God, I feel the power of God. Say amen to that. Second reason. What's the second purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? The second purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is an authorization to demonstrate before it was to exercise. Now it's the authorization to demonstrate and to manifest the power of God. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. In other words, you authorize All what Jesus won on the cross, you must demonstrate the finished work. All what he did, he earned your your, your healing. Whatever he paid for, you've been authorized to demonstrate here on earth. And Paul says, for 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I said, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. And I want you to see this. And my, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration. <laughs> no, those only three people, say, amen. And the demonstration, and the demonstration of the Spirit and the power. Oh, Jesus. The demonstration of the Spirit and the power. Can I hear an amen? Why the demonstration? Somebody say, you want to put a show? Oh, are you trying to perform? Demonstration of the spirit and power. In other words, Paul said to the Corinthians, guys, I know you know a lot of word. I know you have a lot of knowledge. But let me go to you. I will bring the word. But, but I will ask something else. What makes the distinction between a pastor or a minister of a preacher is the demonstration. Let me go on the other side where people support me. What makes the distinction? What makes you distinct to another person? Anybody can speak deep words. Anybody can talk about uh, the, the Greek and the Hebrew. I know Greek and I know Hebrew and John know Hebrew and all the, they know Hebrew, they know Greek and I know the stuff. Wait a minute. Where is the demonstration? In this society with this, we love knowledge and despise experience. We love to be knowledgeable. The Bible says knowledge put off. In other words, knowledge gives you to be prideful. So many people have so much knowledge in their head, but they can't demonstrate what they preach. What makes the distinction between a person and another person is the demonstration. 
When you baptize with the Spirit, you have the ability to demonstrate what you preach. Somebody have to say, this generation is hungry to see the visible works of Jesus. This generation is hungry to see the power of God manifested. It's not enough to preach a gospel of words. It's not enough. We need to demonstrate and manifest. Touch your neighbor and tell them, demonstrate. My God. Can you put your hand together, people? This generation is hungry to see. Where is your God? Where I want to see the visible demonstration of power. One of the meanings, one of the purpose, why you've been baptized with the Spirit, the evidence of speaking in other tongues, is because God authorized you to demonstrate what you speak and what you talk. I, I, Jesus loves you. And God said, yeah, that's awesome. But I want you to go to the extra mile. Now demonstrate that I love them. Oh, are you sick in your body? Yeah, can I pray for you? Let me demonstrate the love of God that God can heal your body. Yeah. Salvation is first? Yes. Salvation is the greatest miracle. But remember, the gospel of the kingdom is not only salvation. It's healing. It's casting out demons. Praying for the sick. It's prosperity. If you came this morning, if you came sad, I can tell you, you can be healed, delivered. Because the gospel of the kingdom is about demonstration in a visible way. Touch your neighbor and tell him, stop talking and demonstrate. No, no, you don't sound like convinced. Say it. One, two, three, go. Why the demonstration? As, as a matter of fact, what is a demonstration? What is a demonstration? Write it down, please. A demonstration is a visible, is a visible manifestation. Is a visible, is an open and visible manifestation to the five senses. Since when you teach power? Power needs to be demonstrated. It's not about teaching power. Oh, I can tell you seven steps about the power. No, power needs to be demonstrated. Oh, Rabba Shita Rabba. Did you hear what I said, people? What, what is a demonstration? Is a visible manifestation is an open to the five senses people can see people can hear why somebody says why why the demonstration because when you don't do the manifestation when you don't do the demonstration you're not a credible witness god never authorized the church to preach the gospel without demonstration he never said go into all the world and speak nice words to them because the, my people, God said, my people is hurting. My people are sick. My people are afflicted. My people are oppressed. I want you to demonstrate my power. I want you to tell them I died for them on the cross. I am beyond. I am the provider. I am your healer. I am, I am, I am God, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody have to shout. Somebody have to shout. If you came this morning, if you came this morning, you're about to see a visible manifestation. Because if I only teach, I preach half of the gospel. God never authorized the church to preach the gospel without demonstration. Number two, the message that lacks demonstration, it will have the lack of credibility. Why, Pastor? Because all demonstration of the supernatural proves that Jesus is alive in the now. All the demonstration of the supernatural proves that Jesus is coming back again. All the demonstration of the supernatural confirms that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth. All the demonstration of the gospel is to confront and tough subjugate Satan. You didn't hear what I said. Every demonstration of the gospel. When I demonstrate the gospel and you see people being free and demons coming out of people, that is a public demonstration that Satan has been defeated. That's a public. I don't excuse myself if people start vomiting and people start 
scoffing and people started in my in my in the church why because that's a demonstration that the kingdom of God has come to a place if you came to hear this morning if you sad if you sick in your body Jesus is the answer Jesus is the healer Jesus is the provider are you ready you must want it you must want it you've been baptized with the spirit you know you didn't know you've been out for us you didn't know you're called to demonstrate power Pastor, but I'm not, I'm not a celebrity, but I'm not an apostle. I'm not a teacher. I'm not an evangelist. Every believer, the moment you've been baptized with the Spirit, every believer is authorized to demonstrate the works of Jesus. Are you going to start? I say, when are you going to start? I say, when are you going to start? Number three. I'm finishing, and then I'm minister. Minister. <laughs> Why the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Number three, the moment you be baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are anointed to do the impossible. <laughs> My God, you are anointed to be on impossible. The word anointed means to be enabled with divine ability. The word anointed, let your hands and say anointed. No, no, not annoying, no, anointed. Say it louder, come on. Shout it. Say, I am anointed to do the impossible. People, do you believe what I'm preaching to you? I said, do you believe what I'm preaching to you? You are anointed. The word anointed means to be, write it down, to be supernaturally empowered. To be supernaturally empowered. To do impossible things with divine ability. That's what anointed means. When you see somebody said, I am anointed. That means that person is supernaturally empowered to do the impossible. That means that person has supernatural endowment, supernatural divine ability to do anything impossible. What does that mean? To be anointed with the Holy Spirit is the criteria for ministry. What's the criteria for ministry today? To be ordained by the organization. What's the criteria to be in ministry today? To go to Bible school. Is that good to do? Yes. You need to go, especially if you need to go to USM. <laughs> That's good. That is awesome. You've been teach, you've been taught. But to criteria in God for ministry in the Old Testament, the New Testament, is to be anointed. <laughs> and by the way, organizations don't anoint people. By the way, I don't anoint people. God is the one that calls people and anoints people. So say with me, I am anointed. No, no, say it louder. Okay, meaning you are supernatural. The moment you've been baptized with the Spirit, the moment you've been, the baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon you, that moment you've been authorized to manifest power. You've been authorized to exercise power and authority, but also you've been anointed, supernatural in power to do impossible things. Oh, jeez. Oh, put your hands together. Acts 2.22. Acts 22. So say with me, I am anointed to do impossible things. But you sound like you, you don't want it. Okay, say it. Come on, lift your hand, say it. I am anointed. Is any impossibility in your life? You have to say in the name of Jesus, I am anointed to overcome difficulties. I am anointed to overcome circumstances. I am anointed to overcome sickness, disease. I am anointed. I am supernaturally empowered to do impossible things. Is anybody, you didn't know that. And you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit for 20 years and you didn't know you are supernaturally empowered to do impossible things. Don't say I can't. Yes, you can. Don't say it's too hard. Nothing is hard for God. Don't say oh, I can. I can. Yes, you can. Because you've been anointed by the Holy Spirit. Supernaturally empowered to do impossible things. Somebody have to shout. I say somebody have to shout. Church and able tell her, I am anointed. Meaning what? Go to the person next to you. And say, I am supernaturally in power. 
No, 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 no. No, no, like that. You, I don't want to get close to you if you go. If you're an unbeliever, you say, can I pray for you? Say, no, no, don't get out of me. You have to go. I am supernaturally empowered to do impossible things. There's nothing impossible for a believer. If you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, there's nothing impossible for the believer. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Believe there's nothing impossible. Those mountains will come down. Those walls will come down. You have to stand up and say, I'm going to exercise power. I'm going to exercise authority. I am a believer. I've been baptized with power. The miracle working power is in me. In Touch your neighbor, tell him. I am supernaturally empowered to do impossible things. Can I hear an amen, people? What's the criteria for ministry? What's the criteria for ministry? Acts 2 22. Men of Israel, the same criteria that God the Father put upon Jesus. Is the same criteria they put upon us. In the Old Testament, what's the criteria? To be anointed. Supernatural empowered, divine ability. And then he said, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested. You, you put in the wrong uh, translation. You have to put the old translation. No, but the, the King James, the old, King James, the old. Okay, there you go. Ah, there you go. See, the young generation is changing my Bible. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth. How many love Jesus of Nazareth? And some of you still love Buddha. Huh? Okay, how many of you love Jesus of Nazareth? He is my hero. He is my champion. He is my Lord. He is my God. Jesus of Nazareth. Wait a minute. Men. Why the Bible call him men? Because when he came to this earth, he was anointed. He had to go to Jordan to be anointed as a regular normal man. He couldn't make any trick. He has to be as men. He had to be anointed, supernatural empowered to do impossible things. Otherwise, he couldn't do ministry. He never started ministry until he was baptized. And many people start ministering today and they don't even feel with power. They just speak words and nice words and the Greek and the Hebrew and the whole stuff. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus of Nazareth, man approved of God. In other words, as men had to be anointed, he had the mantle of his glory, left it on heaven. But the mantle of his anointing, as men, he had to be approved. He said, approved of God. A proof of God. A proof of God. In other words, God said, okay, God says, Jesus, you my son, but as men, my criteria for you to be in ministry and for you to do your assignment on the earth is for you to be approved by me. And then he said, a proof of God among you with PhD, PD, PP, PDDT. But... Approved by God, <laughs> by the denominations. Approved by God, by men in the altar. Approved by God. How will he was approved? <laughs> Lift your hands, say it. He was approved. In other words, he was approved by miracles. Wonders and signs. Put your hand together. What's the criteria for ministry? Miracle, signs, wonders. If you say you're called to be an apostle, where are the miracles? If you say you're called to be a prophet, where are the miracles? Jesus had to be approved by God. How much more you and I? You don't applaud. I'm going to applaud myself. Oh, Sharaba. Hey, he was approved by God. 
Jesus, my God. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? That gets a lot of preachers in trouble. Because the criteria of ministry raises the bar. What's the bar? Miracles working. Why? Mark 16, 15. Why? <laughs> Mark 16, 15. Why? Can you go around over there, please? And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel. That's the first assignment. Preach the gospel. And then he said, please preach it with very nice, giving food to the poor. And we keep verse 16. And then he said, 16, come on. He that believe is baptized shall be saved, but that believe will be condemned. Verse, keep going. Do the next verse. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Why? Wait. Why Jesus needed to be approved with miracles, signs, and wonders? Why was the criteria for ministry even today? But today we change the criteria. Any stupid, I'm sorry, but can stand in the pulpit and speak a very nice word. And after they preach, nothing happened. Because there's no manifestation. There's no, there's no demonstration. There's nothing of what they preach. And Jesus said, okay, Jesus, the son of God, as men, he had to be approved by God, certified by God, by miracles, signs, and wonders. Why? Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 and 5. Oh, my God, I need to minister miracles, and it's almost 11. It doesn't matter. They can wait outside. <laughs> It came to pass that Jesus entered the end command in his 12 and departed hence of verse 2. <laughs> now John, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, the works of Christ. No, the, no, he didn't say, oh, when John heard the words of God. I, I, please, can you help me? Because I don't help me. Give me something for me to dance. When he heard the works, lift your hand and say, the works. The works of, of Christ. He sent two of his disciples. And he said unto him. Are thou he that should come. Or to look for another. That is a moment of doubt. When you came into my church. You said this is the apostle. is the greatest apostle of the end time. And when then after three months. When you have trouble in the church. You said oh, this apostle. I don't know about apostle Maldonado. <laughs> That's a passage to John. <laughs> and said unto him. Are you that verse? Keep it going. The verse. Keep, keep going. Come on. I need to tell you why. You need to prepare proof. Jesus answered and said to him, Go and show John. He didn't say it. Come on. Come on. Show John against those things which you do hear and see. In other words, a visible, tangible. He said, Go show him. Tell him what you see. He didn't say, Tell him what I heard, what I teach. He said, show John what you see and what you hear. Why God required, required of Jesus to be approved by miracle signs and wonders. I'm going to tell you, the revelation is about to explode. Somebody have to chop. The revelation has to be so. Jesus answered and said, go show John. Tell John what you see. In other words, it has to be a visible manifestation to the senses. It's not enough just to talk. It's not enough just to preach. We have to demonstrate it to see and to hear the five senses. So he said, hear and see. Keep going. Next verse. He's not flowing. He's always with the head down. You need to look at me all the time. You forgot to flow with me. Tell John. Jesus went into the scriptures of the Old Testament. And then he said, tell John. And the book of Isaiah chapter 7, speak of me. Tell John. And Job chapter 22, speak of me. 
tell John, and this book speak of me, and tell John all the scriptures. Can you print this scripture? Go to Home Depot over there in the desert, and please give it to him and show him all the scriptures that speak about me as the Messiah. That's what he said? That's what he said? He should have said that if he wanted. But he said, I want you to tell John why Jesus, why Jesus needed to approve what miracles, signs, and wonders. Why? <laughs> because the word follow. This, these signs follow. The word follow means with. The word follow means accompany. The word follow means accompany, meaning when people see a visible manifestation of miracles, signs and wonders operating God through you, it's a sign that God is with you. Is somebody ready to overcome the devil? Is somebody ready to overcome depression? Is somebody ready to say, in the name of Jesus, God is with me. Miracles, signs, and wonders. My God, my God, I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. In other words, he said, I want you to know that my Father is with me. Not because of the Rabboni teacher, diploma. Awesome for the diplomas. I love diplomas. That's good. But he said, my approval comes when those signs accompany me. People will say, hey, God is with him. Nicodemus said, no one, no man can do these signs unless God is with him. Put your hands together. Is anybody for the victory? Is anybody ready for the victory? Lift your hands and say, Father, I've been baptized with power. This is the day of my victory. This is the day I'm healed. This is the day you will heal me, deliver me, because I've been baptized with power. Wow. Isn't that awesome? When miracles, signs, and wonders follow me, accompany me, or you as a believer, is saying to the people visibly, God is with him. God is accompanying her. Question. If I don't demonstrate miracle signs and wonders, the question is in the air. Is it God with him? Is it God accompanying him? <laughs> so it doesn't matter how many PhD, PD, PP you have. The thing is, where are the approved? Where is the approved? How many of you want to receive that power this morning? Hey! Come on, put your hands together. 